Good morning. I'm an old pro now because I know that you press the button when you arrive at church. That means I've been here a long time. Um, welcome. If this is your first time with us today at St. Paul's, or if it isn't, um, I am Reverend Gemma and I'm the priest here. Just a few things to say before we truly kick off. Um, this afternoon is our All Souls service. <clears throat> no, I'm not going to call it a service. Um, act of remembrance, where we remember before God those who we love and no longer see. Um, and as we wait for the time when we see them again. Church will be open from 5.30 until 7.00. Don't worry if you haven't got a clue what's going on. You're in good company. So there will be different things happening. There'll be um, beautiful music. There'll be candlelight. Um, there'll be things to do. There'll be space to sit. And um, there'll be times of silence and peace. Um, come along, stay for as long as you want to. You can stay for the full hour and a half or just pop in for 10 minutes um, and just wander about. I have been collecting a list of names of those people who are dear to us who have passed away. And those names will be scrolled um, in the chapel for the whole of that time. There's still time to add names to that list until about four o'clock this afternoon. So every list I've been getting in the last couple of hours has been really sorry, but it's absolutely fine. Until about four o'clock, I can keep adding names. So do send them. My email address and mobile number is on the back of your service sheet. So either text or email and your loved ones will be remembered. The other thing we would like to do is to raise a toast to those people who have been so precious to us. And it turns out that I've drunk you dry here. I'm sorry. There was a stash of fizz and I've emptied it. I'm proud, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but it means that those of you who in the past have donated bottles of, you know, champagne, Prosecco, you know, things like that. Uh, our store cupboards are empty. And if you would like to, I should probably do that, Craig, put it on the shopping list. We need to bring some fizz. Um, we need to re, uh, restock the cupboards. So do bring some bottles of fizz if you can, and we'll put them in the cupboards and we might even drink some, who knows. I got this gorgeous email this morning from a couple named Margaret and Wade who were married here 29 years ago um, when the church had first been reordered or something. Um, and Margaret's wedding ring has been worn out and she's been given um, her mother-in-law's long loved wedding band. And she sent an email to ask, would it be at all possible if the people of St. Paul's would bless that new ring into her 30th and ongoing years of marriage. What a privilege. So this morning I'm going to offer this mass for Margaret and Wade for their beautiful old new wedding band and for their ongoing years of happy marriage together. And I've pointed them in the direction of our streamed services. So Margaret and Wade, if you are tuning in now or later, your God's blessings upon you from all of us. Can you just all turn and wave at that camera back there so they know, look at that, oh, you guys. <laughs> so God's blessings on you. Um, the other thing to say is that Craig and I are finally going on honeymoon tomorrow. Um, we'll be away next Sunday and then back the following weekend. If anything really urgent happens, um, there's a few secret people who know how to get in touch with me. Um, 
but you'll be fine. You've been fine forever um, and we'll be back super soon. So as we prepare to celebrate the presence of God in both word and sacrament, let's stand for our first hymn, Though I May Speak With Bravest Fire. The Lord be with you. And also with we acknowledge the beauty and sacredness of this place, its ongoing formation from the beginnings of time, the traditional Wajuk Nunga custodians, and all life and creation that has gone before us, of which we are a living part. Are we lighting a candle? How are we up then, Neve? Oh yeah, please be seated. Do I like it? Do you like it? No one knows. I like it. We light this candle as a reminder that Jesus is the light of the entire world and that wherever we are, we are held in the light and love of Christ. Have fun. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength, and you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Gracious God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. of creation and light of all life. Glory to God, gift of life and spirit of love. Glory to God, our birth, our death and our divine life in Christ. Amen. 
God of peace, you taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the power of your Spirit, lift us to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our Bible readings. The first reading is from Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Eli Melech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Marlon and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Eli Melech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Marlon and Chilion also died so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she'd heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she was living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, no, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. And even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you wait then until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? Oh, my daughters, it is it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Opa kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, 
my God, where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. For the word, for the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. This morning's psalm is Psalm 146, and the response is, we praise the divine who lifts up our hearts. <clears throat> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. We praise the divine who lifts up our hearts. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. We praise the divine who lifts up our hearts. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. We praise the divine who lifts up our hearts. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 11 to 14. But when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then, though the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls, with a sprinkling of ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who've been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who though the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish, blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, the 12th chapter, the 28th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? 
Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbour as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. For the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May it be given to me to speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. If um, feedback from congregation members was in any way a measure of the success of a sermon, I could reliably inform you that my two best ones so far were the first, where I told you that I only have one sermon. Many of you have asked me about that statement. And the other one was where I mentioned Bunnings, largely because of my terribly British pronunciation of it. Um, and clearly your inherent love of the place, Bunnings. Anyways, if it was true that there really is only one sermon, as I said when I first came, then Jesus also seems to be a modeler of that theory. And today's gospel reading really boils down all of Jesus's teaching, all of his life, all that he is into just four very simple words. Love God, love others. And that's it. Jesus's message and life's work in just four words. Love God, love others. I seriously considered just saying those four words today and then sitting down. And if there is anywhere in the world where I could legitimately do that, it is almost certainly here. And some of you are almost certainly longing for me to do exactly that. But I just wanna say a few more things before we take time to sit and reflect. Love God, love others. I want to suggest that those are the four most important words in the whole of scripture. Love God, love others. Imagine, imagine what the world would be if we used those four words as the measure for every single thing we ever did, every choice, every deed. Imagine if we considered, does this demonstrate that I love God? Does this choice enable me to love others more or better? How can my time 
be used better in the quest of loving God and loving others. That is how it's supposed to be. It's not like this golden aspiration. It's the plan. It's the aim. And it is possible because God doesn't ask us to do things that we can never do. Everything we do and don't do and spend and give and take, everything we even are is intended to be for love of God and love of others. So the question isn't, should we love God? Or could we love God? The only question is, how? How, Lord? How can we love you? How can we love others well or better? Today is my fourth Sunday with you. And in these four weeks, we have already had great examples of what loving God and loving others might look like. We have explored the need to lay down all that we have, even our very lives if we need to, and come to God with open hands and open hearts, hungry and expectant, willing to just place ourselves into the very hands of God, that we might, as the gorgeous Methodist Covenant prayer says, that we might be employed for you or laid aside for you, exalted for you or brought low for you. And last week we considered how we might love God by throwing ourselves upon God's mercy and how we might love others by extending that same mercy to them. Jesus preaches throughout scripture but the message really is always the same. Love God, love others. Yesterday, I went along to the diocesan training on keeping children safe from sexual abuse. Many of you have been on the course. I can tell by the looks on some of your faces <laughs> and the texts of encouragement I received. <laughs> Um, it was shocking and it was deeply concerning and the church has a really long way to go until all of God's children are safe within her walls but you know one of the things that really shocked me particularly because I was sat there thinking on this morning's gospel passage was when the trainer who was excellent, she shared some words from scripture from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians about forgiveness. And she seemed to be saying that we should forgive and love those who abuse children, that we should extend our love to them. And then she said, but this only applies to the ones who are repentant. And I don't think that that is what Jesus says in his four word sermon. I just don't. You see, love is a gift from God. It's a fruit of the spirit. It, it's the very source and essence of who God is. It's not just something that we somehow muster up or feel. Friends, loving like Christ is life-giving and it's also life-threatening. But it is not ours to arbitrate or to ration. The love of God has not one single caveat because 
it doesn't belong to us. <laughs> it's, it's not ours. It's, it's like the gift that we are totally unworthy of and utterly made worthy for. But it is ours to be recipients and stewards of, not ours to gatekeep. It's like mercy, like the gift we're given in abundance, not to keep, always to pass on, whether or not we think that the recipient deserves it or is sorry enough or worthy enough or anything enough. And when we love, when we love fiercely, we become more and more like the creator, more and more like the one we seek to love because God is love. Love God, love others. And our most perfect example of that is found in Christ. And how is it that Christ Jesus loves? He loves outrageously and indiscriminately. He loves even when the world tells us to hate, or even especially when the world tells us to hate. Jesus loved his disciples with everything he had and everything he was and everything he did. He loved them when they were unlovable. And he loved them when they were lovable. He loved through healing, through feeding the hungry, through welcoming the outcasts. He loved the sinners and the untouchables. He loved through touch and hospitality and welcome. He loved all people, Jews, Gentiles, men, women, and children, those who were sick, paralyzed, possessed with demons. He even loved the dead and loved them back to life. He loved and loved and loved in every thought and word and deed. And then commands us to do the same. Giving our lives over to love is crazy. It's bold and it's all consuming and life altering. And Jesus said it over and over. It was his one and only sermon. And in these pages of scripture, he's speaking to us as individuals and to the church as a whole. This is our commandment. This is how we should behave to the person next to us and how the church should be known to be behaving to the world. Love is what we should be known for. Love God, love others. Jesus says, love extravagantly and unconditionally. Love in every thought and word and deed and continue to keep on choosing to do so, even when it hurts, even when we don't want to, even when we aren't thanked or noticed, and even when we aren't loved back. Love more abundantly, more outrageously, more like Christ. Jesus's teachings are really simple. They're really easy to understand. They feel sometimes impossible to action, but they're utterly world-changing even if we only achieve the tiniest percentage of it. And if we are serious about joining and remaining in this Jesus movement, it will take us to the very edge of ourselves. It will cost us everything, 
and it will give us back even more, all through a crazy revolution of love. You know, sometimes I'd really like to just say four words as a sermon and then sit down and maybe I should love God, love others. Amen. Would you join me in standing to affirm the faith of the church, the revolution of love? Friends, do you believe in God, the gift of love and the source of life? We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there, We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for God's goodness to us. Meister Eckhart says, there is a huge silence inside each of us that beckons us to itself. The recovery of our own silence can begin to teach us the language of heaven. Let us allow a time of silence to hear the language of heaven and to offer our prayers for others and for our world. God of freedom, we pray for those living with and perpetuating bondage, injustice and prejudice. Show us how we may bring justice where we encounter repression so that your people may be our people. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, 
We pray for those places where there is war, violence and conflict. Show us how we may resolve our disputes, live in harmony and respond compassionately when exposed to conflict so that your people may be our people in your mercy. God of wholeness, we pray for those who are ill, physically, mentally, or spiritually. We remember Michael Ellis and those dealing with loss and alienation and upheaval. Show us how we may bring love comfort and support where needed so that your people may be our people. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all beings, we pray for the non-human creation, all matter and life forms. We pray for all communities, including those alien to us, and also our communities and church. Show us how we may open our arms in kindness, respect and hospitality to embrace the other so that your people may be our people. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of thanksgiving, we bring to mind the imminent holy days of all saints and all souls and our remembrance to be held this evening. We remember with gratitude those who have died in your love and those whose wisdom and example continues to illuminate our journeys. Be with us as we seek to follow in the ways of your saints. Our prayers also embrace those who have gone before us and those who will follow after us. May our lives be lives of thanksgiving for those gone and a legacy in your spirit for those yet to come so that we may enter into the inheritance that you prepare for all your people. In your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for those whose particular needs are known to us personally. Show us how we can bring support and love to these people and situations so that your people may be our people. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Divine One, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son and whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Loving God, we open our eyes to the beauty of your holiness. We open our ears to the message of your word. We open our minds to the challenge of your truth. We open our hearts to the power of your love. We open our lives to the coming of your spirit, that we may truly worship you now and forever. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, 
Let us continue to look within, searching our hearts and seeking God's healing grace. God of the loving heart, we confess before you those places in our hearts where we have refused you entrance, people we have refused to love, habits we have never got round to changing, good things we have left undone, and ways in which we hurt you, ourselves and others. Come to us in the light of your cross, Shine on those places we have hidden from you. Show Show us new ways to live. Sweep clean the rooms of our hearts, that Christ may find a home in us. Be among us now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all those who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. We join in our offertory hymn, O Love How Deep. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. 
Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. O oh God, eternal wisdom, all you have made is beautiful and good. We thank you for darkness and light, for this earth and for our bodies, for growth and change and all that lies beyond our knowledge and imagination. In every generation, you befriend your people. You gave us your holy law, sent the prophets and called us back to the truth whenever we turned away. You were vindicated in your servant, Jesus, who came with forgiveness, feasting, and stories of your grace. So we rejected him. Death on a cross could not quench the fire of his love. You raised him up for us, the firstborn from the dead, to build a new community of hope where all are honored as Christ's equal friends. And so we praise you with Mary, mother of the living word, and with all your faithful friends, as we join together in the angel's song of glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God of the feast, your household is hungry for the bread of heaven and the cup of life. Send your spirit on us and on our celebration, so that we may eat at this table and be satisfied with the sacrament of Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with the people he loved. He took the bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to them, and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So we delight to remember Jesus the faithfulness of his life, the victory of his cross, the glory of his resurrection, and the joy of the Holy Spirit poured out for the whole church. Great is the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O oh God, holy wisdom, merciful and generous, Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Make us good stewards of creation. With justice in our hearts and courage in our actions and power in our speech to bear witness to the truth. Protect us with your glory. Unite your church in loyalty and love and bring us home with all of your saints to feast with you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body in Christ. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ who died for you. Eat in remembrance of him and feed in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <coughs> Amen.
Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us in this hope that we have grasped so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. We stand for God's blessing. May God, who shakes heaven and earth, whom death could not contain, who lives to disturb and heal us, bless us with the power to go forth and live the gospel. And the blessing of the Lord God Almighty, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Sing our final hymn, The Servant Song. <laughs>